Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. Today we're upgrading to modern braking for minimum budget. We're putting power disc brakes on our 1965 Mustang that we're calling Project Code Blue and we're shooting to do it all for less than $300. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Today we're doing four wheel power disc brakes on our Project Code Blue Mustang. As you may have noticed on this channel, we're trying to emulate the spirit of hot rodding by using some basic hand tools and your own garage to improve the performance of your car. Now anybody can go out and plop down a couple of grand for a four wheel disc brake swap. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're trying to show you what can be accomplished in just a few days with some basic hand tools and for a minimum budget, we're using a tried and true disc brake setup from another car, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. Enough talking, let's get started. All right, so I've got one of the original axles out here, and this is the seal that goes in between the flange and the, uh, the axle retaining plate. And this is gonna be perfect, because what we're gonna use this for is making a template for our new disc brake mounting brackets. All right, we're gonna go over here to the wheel, make sure our template fits as it should, which looks like it will. We're just gonna throw a couple of bolts in here, make sure everything lines up. And if we did this right, should be perfect. Okay, so measuring the outside flange of the axle is 3.250 inches. So all we need to do is just modify this template here and expand this hole out to 3.250. Now that still gives us plenty of material to bolt to. And then what we'll do in order to get it over the axle tube, but we'll cut this section out so it can slide over the axle tube and then up onto the mounting flange on the back. And that mounting flange is a quarter inch thick or thicker. So between the two, it'll give us over a half inch of bolted surface area on these four bolts. And all we've got to do then is just make a flat plate to mount the caliper on. I've hammered a nail into the workbench and here I'm just holding it against the pencil in order to create a good radius for the outside of the template. All right, now we've got our template here. This bolts on to the caliper and this slides over the axle, bolts on right here just like factory. Alright, now that we've got our caliper mounted, let's measure this distance for our mounting plate so we can figure out how thick it needs to be. Initially I was thinking it was going to be 3 8 I'm thinking it's probably closer to a quarter. 265? So I think a quarter will work perfect there. And all we have to do now is just trace this onto some metal and cut it out and then bolt the new, uh, new calipers on. We've got our template here. I decided to go ahead and make this out of 3 8 and I had bought this piece of 3 8 steel. I think I paid maybe 10 bucks for it and I think it'll be just about perfect size to get two templates out of here. So let's see what we can do make as much room as possible on this little piece of metal. I'm just going to trace the outline so we can kind of figure out where the two pieces are going to be. Oh yeah, that should be perfect. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now that I've got all four of these cut out, we're going to be drilling out the center hole to 5 sixteenths. Now you may be asking yourself, why 5 sixteenths? Isn't the hole a lot larger than that for the bracket? Well, the whole point of this video series is to show you what you can do in your home garage without fancy tools. Now I don't have a lathe, but what I do have is a 5 sixteenths inch bolt, a drill press, and a file. And we're going to use those to get these cleaned up. Alright, now that we've got all these smoothed out and round, we'll drill them out to the final size, which is 31 64ths. Alright, it appears as if our measurements are correct. The brackets fit. Now we just need to get it all cleaned up and shaped and make one for the other side. Let's get started. Alright, got one bracket cut out, sanded down. One to go. Okay, now that I've got these brackets cut out, I'm gonna take the spacers that I made earlier and weld them on to the brackets here. And just to make sure everything's lined up, we're gonna bolt the caliper bracket to the new adapter bracket first, so that way nothing gets out of alignment. Alright, now that I've got both of the plates cut out, let's get them mounted on the car. I've elected to go with some new socket head cap screws. One, because I like using new hardware um, when assembling a, a project. And two, since these are so close to the edge, I wanted something that wasn't going to take up a whole lot of space that I could still tighten once it's on the car. Let's add up what we spent so far. We picked up some 95 Mustang GT rear brake rotors and calibers from Facebook for $25. The 3 8 inch metal plate for the rear brackets I picked up at my local metal store for $10. I did have to buy a new hole saw, which I picked up at Ace Hardware for $17.99. And finally, some new hardware for $10.30. And this brings our running total thus far up to $63.29. So that's going to do it for part one of this two-part series on DIY four-wheel power disc brake swap on our 1965 Mustang Project Code Blue. We're going to be at the Tri-State Swap Meet in Denver, Colorado on February 8th. So if anyone is close by, come out and see us. We'll be wandering around. We'd love to, to meet you. So next time we're going to work on getting the front brakes installed, run all new hard lines, lines out to the calipers, and we'll show the power brake master cylinder installed and tally up our total. If you like what you see here, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when all new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. As you may have noticed on this channel, I'm about to sneeze.